George Masteris from uh, Breaking Bad, and I, I guess better start off with a big congratulations for finally uh, your series and you in particular breaking into the writing category at the Emmys. Uh, you've done very well in other categories. You've won a, Aaron Paul and Brian Cranston. You've been in drama series since the drama series race since season two, and gotten a few directing nominations over the years, but. Uh, it had sort of been ignored for writing uh, by the Emmys in the past. What was that like to get finally in? Oh, it, it was great. I mean, you know, uh, it, it's it's great to finally to finally break in, and of course, uh, Tom and myself getting in there. But I, you know, we really feel like it could have been any one of our episodes. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's uh, the Writers Guild. You know, as you know, we've we we been recognized by the Writers Guild a lot, which meant a lot to us. But you know, it's not, it's I can't I won't lie to you. It's very it's very flattering, and we all feel very honored to get recognized in the individual writing category as well. Mm, you sort of uh, you've sort of in some ways like uh, it's interesting the writing and directing branch in the Emmy. Sometimes they they prefer different shows like. Mad Men won three for best writing and got some years Mad Men was getting like four nominations in that category, um, but it's never won directing. Um, and then on the other hand, you have a Breaking Bad that gets nominated for directing sort of uh, most years, but then is struggling to get into writing. And this year, uh, you, you did even uh, better than your directors because you got two two nominations. You're, you're dominating the category now. Oh uh, well, yeah, I don't know. Two, I guess you could call two dominant. Look, I mean, who knows? Uh, what uh, what happens from year to year? I mean, you know, they're all Mad Men's a great show, and, and uh, the writing in that show is fabulous, and all you know, all the other entries are fa fantastic this year. Uh, look, it's 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 just an honor to be mentioned amongst those names, uh, and um, yeah, I mean, you know, maybe you know, it takes a while for people to start, you know, recognizing uh, uh, you know the show in different categories, but it's it's I'll, I'll tell you, it's great to. Uh, to be there this year, for sure. Do you think there was something about season five that, um, like, because you've done very well with nominations. Every year, Breaking Bad's gotten more at the Emmys. I think this year they got the same as last year, so no drop uh, for, for for Breaking Bad. Sorry. Um, and uh, what do you think season five was sort of the magic that uh, that got it recognized this year? I, you know, I don't know. There's something about the show that it's sort of, it's, it feels like it's built every year in momentum, which which I think is is pretty amazing um, and unusual. And I just I, maybe it's just broken more into the consciousness and part of you know the, the cultural consciousness. Um, that's that's the only way I could really you know fathom. Now uh, we've got a question in our chat room from uh, R R B T T K uh, from Connecticut, and it. He he wants to ask about uh, the about how you go about an episode. Uh, so for like for Dead Freight, which is the episode you're nominated for, um, what what do you have already in front of you before you start writing that episode? Uh, that episode, do you have the basic plot structure and you just write sort of dialogue, um, or how much of it's collaborative? How much does Vince have to tick off? Uh, how, how does that all work? Well, we break all the stories uh, together in the room. There's there's uh, seven seven writers, including Vince, and um, uh, you know, actually, we start out each season talking generally about where the character arcs are going, and where the different characters' heads are at, and we come up with a general general arc about just the character arcs, not the story. The story is pretty much broken, kind of brick by brick, episode by episode, and with each episode, you know. We're all we're all in the room and we're all pitching ideas and we all sort of, you know, it all starts kind of organically. Where's mostly the big question is where's Walt's head at, and um, the stories are broken out act by act, scene by scene, all together in the room. So you have a pretty, and then whoever's episode it is goes out and they they do the outline and then they write it um, and come back with a script. So. Um, the stories are pretty well broken, and you have, you know, you have the scenes in your head. You, the idea is that every writer in that room, uh, you know, if need be, could go out and write that particular script, uh, because we've debated ad nauseum the, the import of each scene and the subtext of every scene, and um, it's uh, it's really run through the minds of all the writers, um, and uh, and uh, so you know, I think that's one of the show's benefits is that. To, 
you know, uh, we debate ad nauseum what the characters would be doing and, and, and what the scenes would be uh, 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 pretty thoroughly. Um, and then you go off and you write it, and you know things are discovered in the writing, and things are discovered in the directing. Uh, um, but the uh, the plot structure is there, and the character arcs are there. The big uh, the big the big uh, sort of fun thing in Dead the Dead Freight episode is we have a train robbery, and like I remember when I was watching this, I was like, oh man, there's a train robbery. You don't get to see that on TV much anymore. Um, yeah. Well, how, yeah, uh, who sort of who, whose idea was that, and uh, how how did how did that sort of um, come come to be? Well, it came to be. Um, uh, you know, season five was really about uh, Walt. You know, Walt at the end of season four, he kills Gus Fring, and so season five is really about he kills Gus Fring. Gus Fring, but you know. Uh, uh, you know, Mike says it to him. Just because you killed Jesse James doesn't mean you're Jesse James. So it's it's about him wanting to step in the shoes and have this empire. It's about empire building. And so the big arc for for Walt story wise was you know building this empire. And so the problem that came up, the problem he had to face with the, the empire building thing was a problem of supply. So we knew that there was this, this was going to be the central problem of supply over the season and it was going to be a conflict between him and Mike and the other characters and so it turned out that there was going to have to be this big you know this big heist that they were going to have to do in order to obtain methylamine supplies and so we started pitching what it could be and at some point you know it was like okay is it is it you know fr a freight trucks but we all love the the idea of of it being a train because of you know Breaking Bad is very much a modern day western and uh, so we kind of pitched it around a little bit never really thinking it would stick because you know the production realities are, are you know to do a train heist uh, you know on a TV budget and what have you would seem to be kind of impossible but we threw it by our producers and thank God we have excellent producers who never just say no and they went out and did the research and lo and behold there was this spur line that we could take over outside of Santa Fe now we're in Albuquerque so uh, that you know, it would that would take a little bit of doing. We had to put the entire company up in in Santa Fe for five days to shoot it. But uh, this spur line was, uh, you know, it was perfect, and it was actually um, it was actually the same uh, spur line that was used in in this in the uh, movie Bush Cassidy and the Sundance Kid for one of their train heists. So it had a nice little uh, uh, history uh, movie cinematic history behind it. And um, so, yeah, one thing led to another, and then, you know, we had this great opportunity, and then it was, you know, okay, now we got to figure out how these guys would actually be able to steal methylamine from a, from a freight train. And that, you know, started the whole, our minds working and, and the research and trying to figure out how this could be done uh, in reality. Um, but that's a whole other animal, uh, the, the, the technical aspects of how they'd pull this off, and we, we reached out to... Uh, to uh, you know, experts in hazard waste transportation. We had train experts. Uh, we had our chemistry expert, and we realized that when hazardous waste, such as methylamine, which is a Schedule One uh, chemical, uh, so it's highly, highly regulated by the DEA, when it's transported from point A to point B, it's weighed at point A and then weighed at point B, so they'll know if anything's been stolen. Um, and so that's where we came up with this idea where well, they'd have to replace the weight simultaneously while they were draining out the methylamine and then we got into the chemistry and how water is more dense than methylamine and how they couldn't foul the stuff at the bottom so the train height the train the idea of a train robbery is a great homage to the western but the but it was also in the problem that was presented to me was how do I make this a breaking bad train heist um, you know and, and it's not guns it's not intimidation uh, like in West, but it's these guys are using their science, and and you know, no one there has a gun except for we realize Todd at the end of the episode, uh, because the whole idea is we don't we, we can't kill anybody if we kill someone we're going to get caught in this day and age you know post 9/11 there's just so much attention paid to these chemicals going around we can't let anybody know this happened. Um, and so the idea is that they had to do this in a very Breaking Bad kind of chemistry way, and hopefully it was every bit as suspenseful as if they had just wrote in there with guns, and you know there was a timing to it and everything. So that's sort of how it came up. 
The, uh, oh, you make you make so much work for yourselves. Most people probably wouldn't have known about the water density and things like that. But that's the fun part, though, yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, it definitely is. And there's definitely, like, this huge sort of adrenaline as you're watching that sort of scene, wanting wanting it to happen and uh, all the all the different elements at play. And, and it's sort of a very exciting scene as a viewer. And then, as you say, uh, we find out that someone did bring a gun. And we have probably one of the most sort of shocking, jarring TV, dark TV moments right yeah. after that. Um, you know, you you guys are um, up against uh, the Red Wedding episode of Game of Thrones at the Emmys, which also uh, packs quite the punch at the end. But, like, uh, you know, you could argue this one's e- this episode's equally as shocking. Uh, how, how was it decided to put that into the end of uh, the Dead Freight episode? Well, you know, um, that was something that was hotly debated in the room. Uh, the idea in season five, when we started things out, where Walt was at was everything was going so very well for him, and he had this confidence, like with the in the premiere episode with the magnet. You know, he says uh, it worked because I said it was going to work, and he has this cockiness, this confidence about him. And that was part of him stepping into the shoes and becoming a sort of Gus Fring kind of larger-than-life figure with the utmost confidence. Um, but to me, you know, uh, uh, the thing about Breaking Bad that makes it, it, it kind of makes this episode, the least, at least the way I approached it in the writing and the directing of it, was that it was sort of a microcosm of the show. Breaking Bad is about consequences. And what, and it's about morale choices. And so, for instance, if this were purely a Western, if, like Bush and Sundance, we would have just let the audience have a damn old good time with this train heist. Uh, but Breaking Bad challenges you, and it never lets these guys get away with their criminality. And the one thing that hadn't happened in the, in the series up to this point was an innocent bystander being killed as a result of these guys' conduct. And that forces the audience to look at, why are you rooting for these people who are essentially criminals. And it's a challenge. It's really a challenge to the audience. And, you know, we felt that that was very important, that we needed to have this consequence um, and to pull the rug out from under the, the audience and, and, and challenge them in that way, which in a very quintessential Breaking Bad way. Um, and, you know, in that sense, I guess, you know, Breaking Bad is more like a postmodern Western than, than purely a Western because, you know, more like Unforgiven or something like that where, you know, individuals make choices and they have to be held responsible for their choices. It's felt like much more of, of you know, and to me, really, the episode it probably will go down as the train heist episode, but to me, the episode is really about the, the, the first time that, an innocent bystander is murdered, and these guys are all morally and legally responsible for this murder, just as if Walt and Jesse had pulled the trigger, because it's all murder. They did this knowing the consequences that someone would die, um, could die, and uh, to me, that that is really, it's, it's about the consequences and the first time this happens in the series, and that really was a turning point in season five, and in fact, for the rest, you know, for the rest of the season, um, uh, because it led to the dissolution of the partnership, and it further exacerbated the strife between you know Mike and uh, and Walt, which and we know how that ended up, and then it led to Jesse leaving, and so this was really it turned into, you know, after that point in the season, the episodes kind of came naturally from this one one big event. So to me, that was the central central event, and so part of part of the train heist, crafting the train heist, was how do you create this sense of, I wanted everyone in the audience to forget about this kid who we introduced in the teaser, so that by the time we're so swept up in the suspense of, of this uh, heist, and it almost, there's like four or five different points when it almost completely goes off the rails, uh, Jesse almost gets killed, you know, uh, the, tr- the Good Samaritan comes in, uh, and Mike's, you know, threatening to abort the whole thing, and and you know, Todd's jumped, you know, caught on the on the roof walls, you know. So at this point, we, we're feeling so much jubilation. I hope at the end of the train heist that the emotion of this of this child getting shot is just that much more uh, um, uh, extreme, and uh, really, you know, it, it hammers that point home. Hmm. Yeah, and I think, like, as you say, the first time that someone who isn't part of the the game 
it, uh, right. sort of uh, just gets gets killed. Um, yeah, yeah. Everyone um, else. Before oh, we've got a question in the chat. So, um, what uh, RBTTK asks, um, what what is, in your opinion, the greatest Breaking Bad episode? Uh, I don't know. There are just so many of them. Uh, um, I'll tell you. I mean, they're all so different. So, um, I am a huge fan of, of course, the pilot. Um, I am a huge fan of Face Off. I, God, I love them all. I mean, and there's episodes like Fly, who I think, you know, it's it's brilliant, but completely different. You know, it seems like people either either are all on board with the Fly, or they're like, this is, you know, what, this doesn't seem like our the show, but. You know, to us in the writers' room, these are all any one of the episodes you could pick out as uh, um, uh, as unique and uh, and extraordinary. So to say which one is the greatest, I'm I'm not sure I'd be able to do that. So <laughs> yeah, the finale will be the greatest. How's that? <laughs> Whoa! Hey, oh, a teaser. I like it. Um, people very excited. Very very excited to see how it ends. Um, we got um, yeah. So. Um, I guess in 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 the right, like you said, there was a bit of a debate in the writers' room over the end of Dead Freight, and sort of like, but it it like it's so important to what happens next in the series. Like, what was sort of what was the big sort of maybe thing that people were debating? Was it when to put that moment in, or to change what happened there, or? Well, I think it was because it was going to be, if this happened, it was going to be such a big turning point. Mm. It, so it was, it, was, it was kind of a question of when. It was kind of a question of whether we wanted to go down that road because you knew that it was, I mean, it just had to break up Walt and Jesse uh, because of the way Jesse, and especially the way, you know, the way it was, A, the way Jess, Jesse is really, you know, turn, had turned into the moral writer of the show at that point, and he was the one that was saying, he was the one that came up with this great idea that uh, we can rob this train without anybody getting hurt, um, because you'll recall the setup to all this was really this, 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 this character strife between Walt and between Mike, Mike saying, you know, two kinds of heists, one where there's witnesses and and one where the guys get away with it, um, you know, so if we do this, you know, I'm the practical guy, you know, he didn't say he wouldn't do it, but he said this is what's going to have to happen. We're going to have to kill the, the conductor, we're going to have to kill everyone uh, because there's no way we're getting away with it. And Walt was actually kind of considering it <laughs> at that point, and Jesse, Jesse jumped in and said, wait, 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 there's another way we can do this, and no one can, you know. So at that point with that set up, when the kid – gets killed, when the witness gets killed, there's no way these two guys are staying together. Um, and, and so at that point we needed to make a decision, well, is this, is this where we want to really force this issue uh, midway through season five? And so there was a lot of, you know, what comes next, what happens next, which is often the case in the debates. And then the other thing is, you know, I mean, it's, a, it's such a huge impactful, emotionally impactful uh, uh, moment that... Um, there's always the question of how far can you take these characters before you completely alienate the audience, um, and you know it's uh, that's the beauty of the, I think in a way is that that I don't know whether people are still rooting for Walt or not. I, you know I think a lot of people probably aren't, but they're going along for the ride now because there are other characters you can root, and we want to see what the end is for this for this. You know the story, so yeah. The like I guess, and uh, talking about Walt, uh, it, it's pretty interesting because, as you say, at the beginning of the series, he's such a like he's a really likable guy that maybe makes some bad choices, but you sort of he seems to be doing it for his family. He's he's doing these things because he's in a really bad situation. Um, and then as the series goes on, we've got up to this point where he's he's in the empire business. He's he seems to. Be less of the selfless sort of factors motivating him, and more of the selfish factors motivating him. Um, I guess sort of what do you think was that sort of turning point for Walt, where he sort of because it's been such a gradual progression over the point. Right. Of the yeah. Huh. I think there's. A, I mean, there's several turning points because there's different levels of where 
you know, how far down the abyss, if you will, did he sort of fall on? I think, I think, you know, an early turning point I thought was, um, you know, in season one when he uh, uh, decided not to take Elliot's money that would have paid for his treatment. So, you know, he has this problem and he goes into cooking meth because he money for his treatment and to leave a nest egg, but Gretchen and Elliot offered him this job and this money, but he was so prideful that he wouldn't take charity. And that was a moment, maybe it wasn't a turning point, maybe he was always always had that kind of hubris, that pride, but that was a moment where it felt like, okay, something in him has ticked, and where is this going to lead? Um, and then I think later on there was an episode, uh, and I'm not just saying because it was mine, cr crazy handful of nothing, where he takes on Tuco in his, to me that was the emergence of this inner Heisenberg that, that there is this darkness inside of him that, that, that after he took on Tuco with the little uh, uh, fulminated mercury and blew up his hideout, he gets back in his car and he feels this intense adrenaline rush uh, at having done something and he feels alive because, you know, up, leading up to that he had gone through this horrible chemotherapy, you know, and uh, uh, um, and this made him feel alive, and I think that was an awakening of this sort of inner darkness in him. And then, of course, later on, there's more, there's moral decisions that he makes, more purely moral decisions, uh, such as when he allows, you know, through omission, he allows uh, Jane to die. That was a big, that was a big moment. Um, and uh, I also believe that in Dead Freight, this is, you know, another level of it, where it's, it's the first time that, that an innocent is uh, killed. A complete innocent had nothing to do. Gale felt very innocent, but he was a meth cook. Um, you know, there was the plane crash, but that was really so far removed from causation from what Walt did that it was not this kind of thing where it was like they committed, you know, this this crime and someone was killed as a direct result of that, you know, the shooting of a witness. They're, they're all responsible, and yet Walt still continues to go on and build his empire. So that was another turning point, I think, as well. Yeah, it's sort of like almost like, as you sort of said, like it sort of changed, at least for me, the nature of the viewer is what I'm expecting and what I'm wanting from Walt now. It's sort of like in the first sort of season, I'm wanting him to, you know, oh, I want him to support his family and sort of get redemption. And right, so going right. to the last season, I'm just like, I'm just enjoying the ride so much. I'm just wanting to see, uh, it's maybe more um, Jesse that I'm wanting to get the redemption and sort of the happy ending for it. It's more Walters just sort of want to see everything come to a head, all the things from the past five years and sort of go up in flames or something like that. You know, like... Yeah. Um, well, Walt's so sort of like he's this master. He's, he's a master at rationalization. He can always come up with, well, if I didn't do this, then, you know, if I didn't let Jane die, then, then Jesse would have ultimately died. And, you know, there's some truth. There's always a kernel of truth in his, his rationalizations. And, you know... Um, you know, he, he, you know, as much as he tries to rationalize, you know, the kid getting killed, well, you know, who could have seen that coming? I mean, there's really, that one's tougher. So he's, he's running out of rationalizations at this point for the stuff that he does. And, and, you know, he's got enough money, you know, finally, you know, we left the season with him leaving the business. Um, uh, and, you know, it remains to be seen how that turns out. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's definitely run out of excuses for what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know any meth cooks, but I know a few people who like to rationalize things. Yes, we all do. Life. So there is some uh, some relatability uh, to that. Um, so, what, um, so the final season, it starts next week. Everyone's so excited. Um, I'm obviously not going to ask you to say what happens because... Um, you're probably probably not even allowed to. <laughs> but uh, they all really live weird. happily ever after, and they move they, to Bali. Ah, oh, that's that's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> are, are you excited for the last season? There's so much buzz for the show at the moment. I'm sorry, you I, that, that you went out there. Oh. oh, sorry, Josh. Are you excited for the final season? It's um, are you excited for the final season, George? There's so much buzz out there. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, um, I'm, I think these are like some of the best episodes, if not the best episodes we've written. Um, and, you know, we're all feeling really good about it. It was, you know, they were hard, hard fought episodes. 
uh, you know, we really considered every possibility and, and debated everything, and, and so I think we're all feeling really good about, you know, how how the, it, it turns out, and, you know, I guess, you know, you all will be the judge of that, so we'll, we'll, we'll just let them out, float them out there for everyone to decide, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm very excited to see how it goes and, and uh, um, feel good about it. You guys also, uh, you also you have a great shot of winning drama series this year. Everyone thinks it's uh, probably going to be neck and neck between you guys and Homeland, with maybe Game of Thrones being sort of the spoiler, depending on um, how Academy members feel about that. Um, what what would that mean to you guys winning the the top award at the Emmys? Oh, I mean, you know, it's a cliche to say it's just an honor to be nominated. It's true. I mean, these shows, television, this day and age, it's like, I mean, Game of Thrones, Homeland. I mean, these are fantastic shows, Mad Men, uh, and so you know, uh, yeah, we we would you know obviously would it would it would be huge, and we would all feel you know. Uh, a great sense of pride, but we feel that we we feel that sense of pride. We feel that sense of accomplishment. But uh, yeah, no, it would be it would be great to be recognized. Yeah, I, you know, obviously. Um, but it is it is truly an honor to be to just to be nominated. And uh, one final question, George, from our chat room from Big Vac. Um, is there a story behind that picture over your shoulder? Ah, which one? This one. Uh, oh, this is uh, yeah. yeah, that one. Um, that is a piece of fan work, uh, fan artwork. Uh, the interesting thing about Breaking Bad is it's turned into such a, it spurned all this fan artwork, and this was a piece that was, uh, uh, there was an art show um, uh, not too long ago in L.A., and uh, this was a, uh, you know, a piece that uh, that uh, was at the art, art show, and actually uh, uh, as a, uh, as a, uh, uh, I guess a, a uh, symbol of the, their gratitude. Sony uh, actually purchased whatever pieces of artwork, you know, prints of the artwork that we wanted for us, and this was uh, one that uh, that uh, I picked out, and it's you know the RV there uh, from the pilot, and that is uh, Tahajali, the desert uh, um, in uh, uh, where the pilot was shot, the location where the pilot was shot. So yeah, fan artwork. Oh, very cool. Well, uh, thanks thanks so much for chatting with us, George, about Breaking Bad, uh, Dead yeah, and Great. That. Um, that, that, yeah, that's such a such a such an interesting category, and it'll be uh, could go a number of ways, uh, including yours. So all the best that for that, nice. and all the best for uh, the best drama series uh, race at the Oscars. Uh, cool. at the Sorry. Yeah. The <laughs> An Oscar would be nice too, but I don't think. Oscar would be good, yeah. <laughs> well, they're, they're, I, I think I think I don't know with the state of TV at the moment, probably probably rather get nominated for an Emmy than an Oscar. Right, right. But it's so it's drama series so competitive at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Thanks. Oh, thanks, thanks, George.